I'm here today to talk to you about my son, oh sorry, Joshua. My husband Darren and I have two sons, um, Nicholas who's almost 11 and Joshua who we call Josh who's almost eight. Oh sorry, who is eight? I'll be right in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> From the beginning, um, I had a normal pregnancy with Josh and it was only when he was about two days old um, that one of the nurses in the maternity hospital picked up that he had an irregular heartbeat. He then had an ECG done in the hospital and they discovered that he had Wolf Parkinson White, which basically just means that he's got an abnormal heart rhythm. The cardiologist was then called in who did an echocardiogram and found that he had several rhabdomyomas on his heart. After he did the scan of Josh's heart, he said to me, Mrs Stone, I think you better sit down. And it was, I suppose, at, at that time, um, he then went on to explain that, um, oh, sorry, going back a minute, I was there by myself because really at that time it was an ECG and we really didn't think it was anything particularly serious and we had obviously Nicholas at home to look after. He then went on to explain that Josh would have an 80% chance of getting a diagnosis of TSC and then went on to explain a little bit about what TSC was about. I think the only thing I really remember from that time was asking him, does, does this condition mean that he'll have an intellectual disability? And I guess my reason for asking that was, I, in my work I've always worked as a speech pathologist with children and I've always had a wide range of conditions and for me personally that was for him to say well in a lot of cases yes that was probably the most devastating thing little yeah anyway so we broke the news at that time to only our immediate family because we're you know it wasn't confirmed it was only an 80 percent chance I guess we were very much hoping that we'd be in the 20%. And we went home from the maternity hospital and read everything we could about TSC, which I suppose a lot of people do. And some of that information was, was okay to read and some of course was, was very negative and depressing. In the early days, it really did feel like the world had fallen apart despite the, the fact that we had a brand new baby. I think and my husband would agree with me, in the early days I spent a lot of time saying, this is not fair, why us? I work with children with problems, so I don't have one of my own. However, over time I stopped thinking like this and just came to accept that Josh for who he was and this was just going to be our life now. Going forward a little, um, yeah, so then when Josh was only a few weeks old, I first contacted Sue, um, who was and still is one of our regional contacts for WA. She answered my questions and shared her own story of her daughter that's got TSC. And at the time, that was just such a valuable contact for me because I, I didn't know anybody else who had ever experienced having their child diagnosed with TSC. And then going forward a little from there, when Josh was about eight months old, um, I attended my first ATSS conference in Sydney and where I got to, like today, got to meet lots of other parents of children um, who have TSC and it was just such an amazing thing to be able to do because you get to hear everybody else's stories as well as learning the most up-to-date information about TSC. So since then I've been back to Sydney on another two occasions where I've attended both of the medical conferences which have just been fantastic, thank you. So going back to Josh, um, it was when he was seven weeks old that he started having seizures. They sort of increased from the first one to sort of more frequent and after a few days. Um, we took him to the emergency department at Princess Margaret Hospital and for those from interstate that's our children's hospital here. And we were fortunate that it was on the weekend and Dr Nagarajan was the neurologist that came to see Josh and she saw one of his seizures while we were still in emergency. He was then admitted to hospital and a number of tests, as you know, such as MRI and EEG were conducted during the next week. We then got the official diagnosis that he had tuberous sclerosis. So we spent a week in hospital and he started on Tegretol in the hope of controlling his seizures. In the first six months of his life, and that first photo, we're back, so that was obviously when he was a beautiful baby, um, 
he was he had a two month period where he was seizure free and but then that sort of stopped really and after that we trialled one medication after another with sometimes initial success but then the seizures always came back. Josh was always on multiple medications but despite that he had seizures every day and during his worst period which was probably between when he was two and three years of age, sorry, he would have up to about 15 every day. He had a combination of complex partial, tonic and drop seizures as well as a period where he had the infantile spasms. The drop seizures were probably the worst in my opinion as he would be because he was fully mobile by then so he'd just be running around and he'd just drop to the ground. He was lucky really that his worst injuries were a knocked out tooth and lots of cuts and, and bruises. He therefore wore a helmet every waking moment and we really only took it off when he was sitting in his high chair to eat or you know when he was asleep. I sort of think that I, I lost count, but he probably tried at least 20 different anti-epileptic medications prior to his surgery. So as his seizures couldn't be controlled, when he was almost three, we took him to the Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne to see if he would be a candidate for surgery. We travelled there several times over a three-year period, initially just for monitoring in the hospital and then later for two neurosurgery operations where they remove seven of his tubers in total. That's a day after his second surgery. So he was actually up and, up and moving. Um, so they took four from the right side in his first operation and then they took three from the left side in his second operation. The days, for those of you that have been through it, you would agree the days of the surgeries are really very stressful because the surgeries take at least 10 hours and you do a lot of thinking and a lot of waiting and you try and distract yourself as best you can, hoping that everything's going okay. So both of his surgeries were about nine months apart. Um, after he had the first surgery, <laughs> that's a couple of days after his first surgery. So he was about three then, three and a half. <laughs> so still smiling, despite the fact that he was obviously in lots of pain. Um, and I think one of the things that's hard about the surgeries, and particularly for Josh at that stage, he had no idea what was going on. He was too little and he just didn't understand and we'd taken him away from home and he was in hospital and he'd been subjected to, to terrible pain, but he was still smiling. Um, so he went after the first surgery from having about 15 se uh, seizures a day to 10 and then after the second operation, he has been extremely fortunate to be seizure free and that's been the case now for about three and a half years. So we're very lucky. Before the surgery, Josh's development was delayed in all areas, but especially with his communication skills, he pretty much tried to use single words to talk, but everything sort of sounded the same. Like just bark was for everything. So that made life pretty tricky. Since the sur second surgery, he just started to talk more and more and more, and now he doesn't ever stop talking. <laughs> And considering that his older brother doesn't ever stop talking, sometimes I think, as a speech pathologist, who taught these children to talk? <laughs> <laughs> He's continued since the second surgery to develop in all his areas. Um, and he's even learnt to read and spell some words and things, I guess, that we didn't ever think would be possible for him. And this, was, this photo was taken on a trip to Bali that we did nearly two years ago. So we actually managed to go on a family holiday and it, and it did actually work. <laughs> we came back all in one piece. Um, we're very proud of him. I think it's been a combination of his surgery and what he learns, and another mum here would agree with me, um, of the amazing school that he attends and of course lots of therapy that has helped him, him to achieve what he has so far. Um, I guess, again, like a lot of people in the first few years, life revolved around medical appointments um, and stays in Princess Margaret, as well as obviously over in Melbourne, as well as lots of physio, speech, occupational therapy. We did swimming lessons, horse riding lessons, gym lessons. You know, it just felt like you did everything you could to try and help him to, to develop to the best of his ability. Things have slowed down a little now that he's eight and his seizures are, are controlled. Now we just obviously have the appointments where we monitor his heart and his kidneys and his eyes and have regular neurology appointments. He's also been um, prescribed through our dermatologist here, the Sirolimus cream, 
on, uh, for his face, the angiofibromas on his face, and we're very excited about how his skin looks already. So you can sort of see on his face there, he still has, they're quite, well, for us, they're quite obvious. Other people don't necessarily notice them, but um, if there's another photo comes up, you can see that it's starting to look a little bit better already. Just to finish off, um, although Josh is doing really, really well now, his TSC does continue to impact on our lives with lots of challenging behaviour as well as, di as disrupted sleep um, and that all happens very regularly. And this can make our lives, not just me but his brother and my husband and particularly my parents who help to, to look after him, it can make life very difficult at times. However, like everybody else, we just do the best that we can every day. And I think for me, having a strong family support network, as well as being lucky to have um, regular contact with at least a couple of other families who've got children with TSC, so you can talk about the good things that are happening as well as the bad, has been really valuable and helpful. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs>